They launched for glory. 73 seconds later the Challenger was gone. Divers pulled pieces from the deep but what surfaced wasn't just wreckage, it was evidence that forced officials to answer questions no one expected. And now we show what the ocean tried to hide. Beneath the surface the truth waited in fragments. Divers moved through dark, freezing waters uncovering twisted metal, scorch panels and something far more haunting. Every piece pulled from the depths revealed not just wreckage but evidence of what really happened in those final seconds. The deeper they searched, the darker the story became. On the morning of January 28, 1986, America gathered around their televisions for what was supposed to be a moment of pride. The Space Shuttle Challenger stood tall against the clear blue Florida sky, ready to lift seven heroes into space. Among them was Francis Scobie, the calm and steady commander, and pilot Michael Smith, quiet yet razor-sharp. Ellison Onizuka, Judith Resnick, and Ronald McNair each brought years of training and a shared dream of pushing the boundaries of human exploration. Gregory Jarvis, the payload specialist, was aboard to conduct experiments for Hughes Aircraft, while Krista McAuliffe, the beloved teacher who had captured the hearts of millions, was ready to make history as the first private citizen in space. At 11.38 a.m., the countdown hit zero and the engines of the space shuttle came to life. Flames erupted beneath the launch pad as Challenger surged upward, climbing steadily through the clear Florida sky. A bright plume of white smoke trailed behind it like a ribbon unfurling in the wind, and for 73 seconds everything seemed fine. Children in classrooms across America cheered while news anchors smiled with pride. The astronauts' families watched from the Kennedy Space Center's viewing area, their faces lit with hope, pride, and nervous anticipation. Then everything changed at 11.39 a.m. when a bright flash tore across the sky. The shuttle appeared to twist for a moment and then disintegrated into a vast cloud of fire and smoke. What people were seeing but couldn't yet process was the solid rocket booster's right o-ring failing in the freezing temperatures. This tiny flaw led to a leak, then a flame, and finally a catastrophic explosion. In less than two minutes after takeoff, Challenger was gone. For several long seconds, no one truly understood what they were seeing. Flight Director Jay Green, trying to stay composed, finally spoke the words no one ever wanted to hear. Flight controllers here are looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. Families of the crew watched in disbelief, clinging to hope that this was part of the mission, maybe a planned separation or a fixable problem but deep down, everyone knew something had gone terribly wrong. The first minutes after the explosion were filled with chaos and confusion. NASA officials scrambled to understand what had happened while reporters speculated live on air. Some people believed the crew might have survived the blast, hopping the orbiter had broken apart but stayed intact. Others clung to silence, afraid to say what they feared most. There were no parachutes, no signs of ejection and no beacon. The Atlantic below was scattered with smoke, flame and debris. As the smoke faded and silence settled over the ocean, hope still lingered. No one yet knew that what began as a rescue would soon turn into a heartbreaking recovery mission. At first, the goal was to find survivors. Search teams combed through the cold Atlantic waters, scanning for anything from a life raft to a signal or even a body. However, as hours turned into a full day, hope began to fade. The images from the debris field painted a grim picture. The explosion had torn the orbiter apart at 48,000 feet, scattering pieces over miles of ocean. By that evening NASA confirmed there were no survivors, and the search became a recovery mission. The Rogers Commission, which later investigated the disaster, described just how massive the recovery effort was. NASA's Search, Recovery and Reconstruction Task Force united military, civilian and federal teams. Navy ships used sonar to scan the ocean floor while Air Force planes flew above, photographing debris on the surface. Divers worked in pairs, descending into dark waters to identify fragments. Each day, more pieces of the shuttle were lifted from the sea, and over time, the debris field grew into a haunting patchwork stretching across hundreds of square miles. Thousands of fragments were eventually recovered, catalogued, and sent to Kennedy Space Center for study. Still, one question hung heavy in the air. What happened to the crew cabin? For NASA, this was the hardest moment in the agency's history. The men and women who had dedicated their lives to exploring space were now faced with the cost of that dream. Over the next weeks, ships continued to pull fragments from the sea and by late April recovery teams had collected over 100 tons of debris, about half of the orbiter's original weight. The rest remained scattered or buried beneath the ocean floor. The wreckage was stored in a controlled hangar at Kennedy Space Center, laid out piece by piece like a puzzle waiting to tell its story. This reconstruction helped investigators piece together the sequence of failures, starting with the leak in the right booster, followed by the escaping flame, and finally the moment it ignited the external fuel tank. The Rogers Commission documented the recovery in meticulous detail. Dozens of federal and military agencies, hundreds of divers and countless hours of sonar scanning went into piecing together what happened in those final 73 seconds. 
it was one of the largest recovery operations in American history, rivaled only by major military efforts. For the families of the seven astronauts, the recovery brought a measure of closure but also deep sorrow. Their loss became a symbol of courage etched forever into the history of spaceflight. Even now, decades later, the images from that day still linger, the bright streak of the shuttle rising into the sky, the sudden bloom of fire, and the split trails of smoke drifting apart. When the first pieces of Challenger began to surface from the Atlantic, investigators worked long hours in silence, studying burn marks and analyzing fractures. The forensic team had one goal, to map out the sequence of failure and understand what the crew might have experienced. Using telemetry data, video footage, and the recovered pieces, they pieced together the story frame by frame. The breakup began when a rubber O-ring in the right solid rocket booster failed to seal properly in the freezing morning air. The escaping flame pierced the external fuel tank, igniting the explosion that tore the shuttle apart. The crew cabin, remarkably, stayed mostly intact as it separated and continued upward before descending into the ocean. It was a chilling realization, but also proof that for a brief moment, the astronauts were still inside as the vehicle fell. This realization changed everything. On March 7, 1986, divers located the wreckage of the crew compartment, resting roughly 100 feet below the surface. It was a discovery that brought both relief and heartbreak. The cabin had been crushed and fragmented by impact, but enough remained to reconstruct what happened during those final moments. The debris was lifted from the seabed and brought aboard recovery ships under strict supervision. Engineers, forensic specialists, and military personnel examined each piece, searching for evidence that could reveal how the breakup unfolded. Inside the hangar, engineers assembled a rough skeleton of Challenger, marking where each recovered piece fit. The joint where the O-ring failed became the focus. Burn patterns and warped metal told a story more powerful than any report. Yet one question still lingered. What had happened to the crew? Reporters asked, families waited, but NASA stayed silent. The agency needed time not just to complete the technical recovery but to handle what they knew would be the most sensitive part of the operation. During the recovery of the crew cabin, divers discovered what official reports described as possible human remains. The fragments were small, commingled, and difficult to identify. The cabin had struck the ocean at high speed, creating forces far beyond what the human body could endure. Weeks in salt water and immense pressure had left the remains fragile. Forensic specialists and military pathologists carefully documented and preserved them under military protocol. The Rogers Commission later confirmed that human remains had been recovered, though details were limited to protect the family's privacy. Some remains were fragmentary or commingled, making it impossible to separate them by individual crew members. Without modern DNA technology, investigators relied on anatomical examination and personal artifacts. Evidence suggested the crew cabin stayed intact briefly, but the astronauts likely lost consciousness within seconds due to cabin depressurization. The final impact, an estimated 200 miles per hour, was unsurvivable. Once the operation concluded, NASA arranged for remains to be handled according to the family's wishes. Some were returned privately, others were cremated together. On May 20, 1986, those shared remains were interred with full honors at Arlington National Cemetery under a monument bearing all seven names. NASA never released photographs or detailed descriptions, choosing respect over disclosure. For investigators, the discovery of the cabin and remains provided closure. It confirmed how the cabin separated, descended, and broke apart. That data reshaped the shuttle program. Engineers reinforced booster seals, restructured launch protocols, and overhauled NASA's safety culture. Many of the divers and engineers who took part said they never forgot the experience. Some described the eerie calm of the ocean floor, the way the shuttle's pieces rested like a broken monument. Others said the recovery felt less like an operation and more like a vigil. Every action was deliberate, every silence meaningful. In the end, the question of where the bodies recovered became less about the physical and more about what remained of their spirit. The crew may not have returned home alive, but the recovery brought their story back from the depths. Through months of searching and piecing together fragments, investigators restored more than wreckage, they restored memory, purpose, and accountability. What they found beneath the waves was not only the truth of how the shuttle broke apart, but also a mirror reflecting humanity's own limits and determination. They found that progress comes with risk, that mistakes can cost lives, and that from those losses entire systems can change for the better. Challenger never reached the stars but her crew did something even greater, they taught the world that even in loss, discovery continues.